My name is Don. Uh, I'm one of the two people that run Constellation Records. We're sitting in a loft of, uh, of Constellation in, uh, in Montreal, uh, in the Mile End part of the city. Constellation Records is, uh, is a traditional record label that's been operating for, uh, for about nine years. Uh, traditional in the sense of, of, of what we do is, is, is release records. Uh, it's not traditional in the, in the sense of some of the ways we go about doing things, uh, but for the most part, it's a record label. First and foremost, how is it non-traditional? Um, I think mostly, mostly, mostly in uh, uh, in our approach to uh, in our approach to to a couple of things. Um, we work almost exclusively, uh, but not exclusively, with with artists from either the Montreal area or at least uh, from regions that are close enough to us that that we can get to know the artists we're working with and see them. On a regular basis, we've, uh, you know, to contradict myself, we've just for the first time started working with somebody from far afield, from LA, in fact, Carla Bozlich, but she's somebody that we've we've known for a long time. Uh, so it's not like we started working with a stranger that uh, we encountered through a through a demo in the mail. We've we've had a long-standing relationship with her. So for the most part, our interest is in working working locally uh, with people that we can get to know over time through lots of FaceTime. And there are, there are reasons for that that go beyond just our, you know, just our simple desires. And one of the primary ones is that we work without contracts. And in order to work without contracts, you obviously need a great deal of trust. And the only way to sort of build trust is, is, is through lots of face-to-face -face time conversation, uh, getting to know one another so that, so that there's, there's no, uh, there's no uh, room for distrust to, to start setting in. It's not new, it's been around for a long time. Um, been around for a long time with, 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 you know, with, with independent labels that started in the late 70s and 80s where contracts just did not exist and contracts did not exist for very good reasons because those labels started out and set themselves up to do things in ways that were antithetical to, with, to the way the, the music industry worked. Um, and in large part, that's, that's sort of the, 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 the ethos we operate under to try and, to, to try and go back to that time, um, to operate in ways that are oppositional to the, to, the, to the music industry at large, which, you know, for the most part, we don't have very good things to, uh, to, to say about. We think, by and large, it's a, you know, it's a huge cesspool uh, there's, uh, you know, it, it, it's it, it's 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 a business and and nothing more, um, and has become more and more so. Uh, if you go back to you know go back to the time when independent labels came into their own, started and then came into their own, uh, there were very real reasons for independent labels um, reacting to the to the bloated corporate music machine that existed at the time. Um, Lots of people would argue, and we would, that we've come full circle and we are back to that bloated corporate music scene, no matter how many independent labels may exist and, 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 and call themselves independent. Whether they're corporate owned or not, it's how they, how they behave, how they model themselves, how they go about working, uh, in our minds, determines you know, their, level of, their level of independence. Um, so, in, you know, in, in, in working without contracts, it's an attempt to, to, to say you don't need lawyers, you don't need infrastructure, you don't need pieces of legal paper uh, in order to do what we do. You can do it you know, with a handshake and a, and, a, and, a, and a certain level of trust that says, you know, we will not screw you, we're asking that you don't screw us. Moreover, if, if, if somebody, you know, if somebody, any artist that we're working with decides that, that they no longer wish to work with us, the last thing in the world we want is to, is, to, is to then hold up a piece of paper and say, well, you have to. Who in the hell wants, you know, we're a small, tiny label. Uh, we have to deal with these people. Do we want them tied to us by virtue of some legality? I don't think so. That's not what we set out to do. It's not, it's, it's not why we, uh, you know, it's not what we want to be doing with our time, um, fighting, with, uh, fighting with people we're working with. You know, the, the, the earliest stuff that we worked with um, you know, were, were, were bands that, that, that had no records, had no anything. They were bands that were playing out. Uh, and, you know, when we started Constellation, there was, there was very little in the way of infrastructure in Montreal, uh, i.e. there were no places to play or no places to, to, to easily play. 
Um, there were no studios, there were no record labels to speak of, or at least record labels that were releasing anything that we were interested in. So, you know, the first batch of stuff that, 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 that we became involved with were, 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 were well before, you know, any, any release proper had been done. Lots of bands, obviously, you know, were making, uh, were making self-release cassettes and, 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 and seven inches and whatever they could afford to cobble together. Um, but this was even, you know, this 10 years ago was even almost in the, in the pre-CD era, or at least the pre, it's so cheap and easy to have a CD made. It still cost, you know, it, the costs then were still a bit of a barrier to, to you know, to, to knocking off a CD, um, you know, whenever you felt like it. Um, so that were the that was the early days. Now, now it tends to it tends to it tends to be all over the place. Some bands have a you know have a finished record. Uh, they've They've come out of the studio with something that that's not committed anywhere. They want you to hear other bands. Uh, other bands, um, you know, may have may have a, a record release somewhere of some sort. It, it's all over the place. But uh, by and large, we've tried, as our ability has permitted, to to fund recordings uh, across the board. Um, you know, we had a we had an original sort of rule of thumb that that that. We couldn't afford to, to to cover the cost of recording for for first records, but everything after we would we would share that cost. And now we're trying to we're we're trying to cover the costs of, of all initial recordings as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you know it, it's that's a, that's not an easy thing to do for, for for a small record label, particularly in that most of our bands are working in in, in 24 track two inch analog studios. That's that, that can be very expensive, but Outside of Canada, we work with what is essentially uh, one company that's coordinating our distribution for many parts of the world. Um, that company is, is, is Southern Records or Southern Studios, uh, which is based in London. I don't know if you're familiar with John Loder, uh, but he recently died. Um, he was a, a studio guy um, that was very, very active in the, in the 70s, 80s. Uh, his studio continues to run um, I first knew John Loder as the as the guy that recorded uh, uh, Psycho Candy, uh, Jesus and Mary Chain. Um, he started he started this distribution company back in uh, in the late '70s, uh, more or less to bring over to Europe uh, a lot of the a lot of the American punk stuff that had no distribution whatsoever. Um, and uh, his the earliest uh, the earliest labels that he was working with uh, was Crass from over there and and Discord from over here, as well as all kinds of small tiny tiny stuff. Uh, they eventually also opened uh, a sister company in Chicago that continues to operate. That's Southern Records. So we work with both of those companies uh southern in london coordinates all of our distribution for europe they work with a single distributor in each more or less each country on the continent uh and they cover all of the us from from chicago um the way distribution is set up in europe versus the us is is is, is very very different um but for the most part we're dealing with one company outside of outside of canada that covers the US, all of Europe, and Australia. Uh, in the US, the way independent distribution works is everybody buys from everybody. So as long as as long as you're working with as long as you're working with, you know, somebody that you trust, uh, then all of the other distributors more or less will 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 buy from them and and vice versa. Uh, it's not not quite the same in in Europe. It's uh, for whatever reason, it's you know, no the distributors don't buy from each other. Uh, it, whatever distributor has it is where the you know whoever's looking for it goes to to get it. So you know, by and large, distributors are pretty resistant to just taking on anything, uh, no matter how uh, much how much affinity they might have for a particular record. So I think distributors distributors are looking for um, a, a track record or something that says this is not a label that's you know going to cease to exist mm -hmm. uh, in six months time mm -hmm. so they want to see that you have at least a handful of, of, of releases under your belt that 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 
that stuff is happening on a regular basis and is likely to continue to happen. They want to believe that you're going to at least get close to meeting some deadlines that 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 they that as distributors need met if they're going to you know if they're going to release records on time when they say they're going to release them. Um, and obviously, you know, they're going to want some affinity for. For, for the for the kinds of music that, that you're releasing, so all that stuff together um, is, is not a is not a is not a is not a uh, is not an untall order, mm -hmm. um, and given the level of you know the level of, of, of competition for 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 distributors' attention, it's uh, it's hard. Um, so when people ask us, you know, what should I do distribution-wise, uh, you know, we tell people to that that they should simply start small uh, you know work work in your own backyard um, you know so that you're selling records locally uh, do your best to sell stuff through mail order um, essentially build it build it and 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 they will come if there's if there's any reason for people to come they will find you and they will come and distributors eventually will 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 be interested in in, in 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 what you're doing if what you're doing has has you know any 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 sort of viability to it anything that 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 you know that that is meaningful to to an audience outside of outside of your neighborhood uh, then eventually people will find you so all I can you know all I can all I can say to to that question of of, of being a Montreal label is is, is you know. Is what I understand about about Montreal and 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 what the what the good things or what the confluence of, of, of factors uh, may have been in 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 contributing to what is a what is a pretty healthy music scene, and you know probably the biggest one is that is that it's it it's 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 it exists outside of outside of uh, outside of industry, if you will. Um, there is no, there is no major label presence in Montreal uh, aside from aside from you know drunken A and R people coming to town for whatever festival. Uh, it it uh, unlike a city, for instance, like Toronto, where the the main music sort of industry presence is here. It's you know it, it's a lot more obscure, save for you know the the things that have happened recently, like uh, you know the the, the the Montreal, uh, the Montreal, whatever it's been, uh, journalists uh, pilgrimaging here, calling it the New Seattle, et cetera, uh, as a way to sell magazines. Um, there's, uh, you know, the, the the people that have come to Montreal over the years have done so, you know, for lots of reasons that include the fact that it's not a music industry town. Uh, they've come here. They they they've come here because they care more about they care more about the work itself, as opposed to as opposed to to catching the ear of of, of some A and R rep, they also came here because the rent historically was very cheap, uh, which is a you know a whole other long story. But but until recently, it was an incredibly cheap city to live in. So for artists looking to spend most of their time uh, working at their art, as opposed to as opposed to trying to pay the rent, it, it, it was a bit of a, a bit of a nirvana, which has which has changed. Um, that combined with you know, there's a certain there's a certain aesthetic to, to Montreal that doesn't exist in in, in very many uh, Canadian or or North American cities um, that 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 drew people here and probably continues to draw people here. All of that stuff you know together um, deposited a fair number of people here over time and a fair number of highly creative people that that that. Eventually, there was no question that 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 the stuff was going to 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 reach some critical mass and 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 explode in, in in lots of great ways, and that's more or less what was happening when when we started Constellation. Except there was no there, there was really no no infrastructure existing to 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 do anything with it. It was it was everybody was struggling to uh, to to everybody was struggling to find an outlet. Uh, there was you know. Tons of great stuff happening, but you know what? What? What do we do now? Um, and Montreal, like like any other city with no infrastructure, was you know was in a position where it was only going to you know then begin 
uh, exporting its exporting its talent to, to 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 lots of other places and you know Montreal at that time at least for the you know the musics that we were interested in was 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 really you know any 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 small labels that existed were simply a springboard to uh, either an American label or uh, or you know a major label or something something else there was no there was no place that 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 very many people would consider calling a long term home so that that's that's the that was the the situation we found ourselves in in, in back then so I don't know if we've addressed the question of, of what it's like to be a to be a record label uh, in Montreal, and and I don't know that I can I don't know that I really can address that question. Uh, there's uh, you know there's certainly been far too much media attention focused unhealthy media attention focused on Montreal, which serves nobody uh, aside from aside from uh, music magazines. Um, the idea of of calling Montreal the new Seattle is you know. That in itself is, is is just utterly, utterly asinine uh, in our minds. Uh, we know we know what that does. We, we we've 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 seen that history. We've seen that history repeat. Um, it serves it serves nobody. It's least of all the people here. There there are people here who argue. Oh well, it's bringing all this attention. Attention for what? Uh, if uh, that that attention is going to drift away, very very soon. Uh, and then it will become negative attention. Then you'll be tarred with you'll be tarred with 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 some notion of oh that's old, uh, that you know that, that that's so yesterday. We we all understand those those dynamics in in, in, in at, at this place and this time in history. And yet you know that allure to some people is is is, is just uh, is too strong. Um, but for the most part, we wish. That whole idea of, of of the media spotlight shining on any place and saying, you know, this is it, uh, would 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 just go away and go away fast before it before it does any real damage. I grew up in a I grew up in a, a pretty culturally isolated environment in the east coast of Canada in uh, in in a place called Nova Scotia um, that has uh, an island called Cape Breton. Uh, that's uh, that's. It's a large island, but nonetheless an island uh, and, and a, a very closed, culturally closed uh, kind of place. So, you know, I, I, I came of age, uh, I came of age just as, 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 as punk was, was finishing uh, its, uh, it, its breaking um, and, you know, knew virtually nothing about any of it. Uh, other than the caricatures that 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 managed to 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 get transmitted, uh, caricatures of 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 of, of people with mohawks, uh, and my older brother, you know, age-old cliche story, um, who'd left for university at that time, uh, started bringing uh, music home in the summers when when I was uh, when I was a year or two uh, still in high school. Um, which was sort of the first, my first uh, kind of kind of awakening. Um, I can remember I can remember uh, hearing Clash records for the first time and just being uh, being being absolutely bowled over and amazed. Um, while I was always a music fan growing up, it was you know, my taste was 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 atrocious and and completely completely built on 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 what was available to me. So from you know from there and and, and going to university is when I started to become a uh, a voracious music consumer, and uh, for the most part, aside from a couple of years of, 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 of kind of dropping out of everything, um, have just continued to be a music fan, uh, and ended up, you know, in in, in, in spheres of life that uh, that 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 were completely disconnected uh, from music, um, and then coming full circle, meeting the 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 guy that runs Constellation with me, Ian, uh, and and you know, very quickly, just just. Uh, just, you know, determining that we were going to do something real, and 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 and, uh, and 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 just going from there. Our approach to starting Constellation, aside from aside from, you know, aside from a bit of a, a bit of a dream, um, as to what could happen, uh, was more was more of 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 an art project. Uh, it was more of a. If you remove the if you remove the, the the sort of financial constraints, this is the way we would like to work. 
Um, and so long as, so long as we can continue to pay our rent through other meager means, then we can operate like an art project. We can, we can, we can make all these decisions uh, that have nothing to do with commerce, uh, that, that, that have everything to do with, you know, with, 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 with getting, with getting, you know, art out there in the most, in the most uncorrupted fashion. Uh, and wouldn't that be lovely? Uh, and, you know, again, we were, we were just sort of fortunate to be in the right place at the right time that, by and large, that's the way it's, that's the way it has, uh, has sort of, um, unfurled. We continue to think of this as an art project and we continue to be guided by that notion of an art project in our decisions that have to do with, you know, have to do with commerce and we don't kid ourselves that we're not engaged in, 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 in commerce, uh, but try and make decisions that, 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 that have more to do with more to do with 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 art than 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 maximizing profit or or whatever you know whatever whatever commerce is up to. I wouldn't kid yourself that that you know that this the level of state funding that exists in Canada uh, is 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 any more than 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 the level of of foundation funding, and in fact, it it probably is much smaller. Um, the 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 couple of state entities that exist in Canada, mostly the Canada Council for the Arts, would be you know, equivalent to the same kind of organization as, as the NEA in the US, which I, I know has been, has been gutted and, 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 and left just a former shell of itself. Mm -hmm. However, we don't have the, the kind of foundation money that exists in, in the US, not even, not even, a, not even a, a shadow of it. Um, so I think, you know, not knowing the complete set of facts, but, but I think one, if they did know, could argue that the level of funding for, uh, for um, any kind of artistic endeavor that is not commercially viable is probably higher in the US than Canada. But, but I could stand, I, I, I could be completely wrong on that. That's just my best guess based on what I know. So in Canada, we have, we have, we have the main funding body is the, the Canada Council for the Arts that tends to fund that tends to fund things which which uh, are considered to be non viable in their own non not non viable in a commercial sense, uh, and then there's another there are other Quebec funding bodies this this province that Montreal sits in at the at the at the state level the provincial level there are funding bodies as well. That's not. <sighs> those 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 funding bodies are not so interested per se in what a label like Constellation, for instance, is up to. Um, and the alternative to the Canada Council or the Quebec Arts Councils are very much commerce driven. Uh, and in fact, all of their decisions, they, they, could, they should be understood more as export development corporations than as arts funding bodies um, because they, they simply care about fostering and growing something to the point where it will become an exportable commodity. Uh, so this idea that there's, there, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a large amount of state funding in Canada for the kinds of things that we're doing, I think is, a, is, 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 is not quite accurate. What we do have in Canada that's been helpful and is helpful to, to, to labels like us, although becoming less so, is an organization called Factor. Um, which is a non-state body per se. It gets some of its funding from the government, but most of it, I believe, gets some from the government. Most of it comes from the industry. And again, it's, it's, it's a commerce-driven commerce -driven place. Uh, it's basically you know, something that, that the major label and radio industries give back to uh, in order to help uh, emerging artists uh, tour Record, etc. Um, for a long time, for a long time, Factor was fairly egalitarian in their approach to that stuff. But I think somebody has probably come in and shaken it up and, and decided, no, we're going to focus on what's going to be successful and develop those as exports. Um, so they've very, really narrowed their focus in terms of what they will what they will fund. Um, some of our artists through the years 
uh, in the early days have, have gotten grants which have helped them tour, uh, both, in, both in North America and in Europe, um, but it's becoming a harder and harder, uh, harder process to, to, to get those grants. So all that to say we are not any way near uh, any kind of uh, uh, ideal uh, for, for state funding, uh, not, certainly not what we think it should be. The people we've been working with, for the most part through the years, are a mix of a mix of francophones and anglophones. Uh, it probably has tended uh, more to the anglophone side. So, uh, you know, uh, has that changed? Has that mix changed? Probably, probably somewhat. I think for sure the interaction amongst musicians uh, within within the music scenes that, that, that I'm in any way associated with. Uh, I think, uh, I think the, 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 the linguistic mix in there is for sure a healthy one um, and probably far more representative of, of the language mix in Montreal than it was at one time when, when, when music, you know, music scenes were very, very cut along linguistic lines. Some of them continue to be uh, some of them are, some music scenes are, are, are still uh, entirely uh, one way or the other, but within, you know, within at least the ones that, 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 that I can say anything about, that, that I have any degree of familiarity with, I, I think for sure um, the, the mix has, has changed, uh, or at least is becoming reflective of, uh, more reflective of, 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 of what exists in the city. I'd be the I'd be the last person to 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 to, to dictate to anybody uh, where where they should or, or should not move. I mean, I guess anybody considering come to, coming to Montreal needs to needs to needs to understand um, needs to understand that it you know it is a it is a French speaking place. Um, there are there are very real barriers to work here. Um, if uh, you know if if you're if you're trying to find some part-time or full-time job to pay the rent and you don't speak French, your options are extremely, extremely limited. Uh, if you're not a highly skilled person, um, uh, highly skilled in some other, in some other realm of, of, of work. Uh, so there's, you know, there's that to consider. Uh, there's the idea that this is no longer a cheap place to live. It's been, it's been, you know, Montreal has been heavily gentrified. Over the last few years, um, there are there are still fairly inexpensive pockets of the city, but but they're not uh, they're not they're not they're not uh, they're not central to, to 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 music scenes at least not yet. They probably will become so as 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 people are forced out of of, of, of main areas, which is happening now. Um, if you're if if anybody's coming here <laughs> with ideas that uh, Montreal is the place to 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 go, you know. To go seek fame and fortune. I mean, I I, I do take issue with that. Uh, stay home and 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 create your own uh, scene, um, which which will do you uh, will do you and and your local community far better than uh, than 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 going somewhere else will. Um, so you know, if you have if you have if you have very good reasons, uh, creative reasons or otherwise for 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 thinking Montreal might make a good home, then then you know, I'm not going to tell you not to come here, but but. But think it through uh, before you do. Come visit. Come visit first. I guess uh, you know we get asked this question all the time, and it's it, it's a very hard one to answer in a general way. But you know we get depending on where the question's coming from. You know determines both how we answer it, and even if we have any interest in answering it. You know we've had countless. Countless people come to us uh, through the years wanting us to look at their, literally wanting us to look at their business plans. Uh, and, you know, that gets a very, a very short answer if, if, if you're approaching this, you know, at the outset as, as a business with a, with a, with a, with a quote-unquote business plan, then, then we probably don't have very much in common and, and, and not very much to talk about. Um, I guess one, you know, the one piece of advice we do try and try and, and give people who seem at least like they're 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 approaching it um, from the same place that we did is to you know whoever's going to be involved in that label 
to have some very real conversations about what it is you're setting out to do. It's, uh, it's very, very, very easy and very cheap to sit down and have all kinds of romantic ideals about what it is you're going to be and, and become and, and, and how you're not going to sell out, et cetera, when you have nothing really to, uh, to, to, to sell, when nobody wants to buy. Uh, it's a whole lot harder when the devil comes knocking on your door with a bag full of money uh, that you desperately need um, to say no. And maybe you won't say no, but, but, but if, you know, if you at least have a common understanding with, 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 with the people that you're working with, um, even if that's just yourself about what it is you, you're setting out to do, uh, then you can at least remind yourself down the road, if the devil does come knocking, uh, that you had that conversation, that, 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 that the guy outside that door has nothing to do with that conversation, uh, and that uh, you are you know, completely, completely able to, to say no to that guy if, uh, you know, if, 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 if that conversation had anything, any, any real content in it in the beginning. And that saying no to, to, to that devil outside the door with his bag of money may be hard the first time, but it becomes easier the more often you do it, uh, it becomes easier each time. Um, so don't, uh, don't, 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 uh, don't despair on that front.